before we start talking about edit mode, uh, there's something that we need to bring up, and it's on the subject of data blocks. This video tutorial is an adaptation of a lecture that I would give on the second week of the workshop that would talk about data blocks. The purpose of it was to explain what goes on in Blender under the hood, so you know why there's a difference between object mode and edit mode, why you can reuse meshes and objects and materials and textures and all that stuff. Blender is designed as a, um, it has an object oriented paradigm, which basically means that you can uh, reuse information, uh, which makes the way Blender handles information actually quite powerful and also a little bit difficult to understand at first. But once when you grasp what's going on, it becomes really handy. So what we see here is the default Blender scene, because uh, you know how when you open up Blender where you see a cube, a light source, and a camera? This is what that looks like in data block form. So here we see at the very bottom is the scene, which is basically the same as uh, selecting this scene right here. Attached to that, or rather linked to it, is the camera, lamp, and cube objects. So here's our scene. Here we have our camera. And then when I select the camera, it also selects it here. Then the lamp, and then this object called cube. Now, it's important to understand that a, an object is just a point in space that has you know, some information about you know, physics calculation and you know, scaling and rotation. But the way the object actually looks, that's defined by the mesh. You can't edit the mesh information while you're in object mode. You have to be into edit mode. See, now, while we're in edit mode, we can actually edit the mesh itself. This is what defines what the object looks like and nothing else. A shortcut to go in and out of edit mode and object mode is by pressing tab. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, OOP schematic. Uh, oops, O-O-P-S, it stands for Object Oriented Programming System. <laughs> in this view, here you can see that the cube is attached to a material data block. So this is what's defining the color of the mesh. And then linked to the material is the texture data block. Okay, let's show you some new things about... Uh, how you can manage different meshes and objects in Blender between different scenes, and we can have the we can keep this view open so you can see what's going on. You don't have to have this view open. The um, the outline well actually the outliner has two modes. Right now I'm in uh, Oops schematic view. Outliner makes a little bit more sense. This can be useful when you're trying to handle you know complex scenes, bone structures, and stuff like that. But typically you never ever ever use this because it just gets too messy too quick but at least now you can see what's going on all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate this object there are two different types of duplicate there's duplicate and linked duplicate to duplicate an object you just press shift d and it automatically puts you into grab mode and then left click to confirm new location okay i'm going to tidy this up a little bit so you can see what's going on. Okay, so what I just did is I just created this new object. And since I did a duplicate, since I did a duplicate, I also need to it also needed to create another mesh. So if I edit this mesh, it's going to be independent from the other object. Okay, now I'm going to do that again except this time I'm going to do a linked duplicate. Now, one thing you'll notice that when I deleted that object, that I just deleted the object, not the mesh. See, that mesh is still in space somewhere. So if I wanted to, like if I wanted to go back to uh, this object here and change what mesh it's linked to, I can just click on this little pop-up button, pop button on the data block buttons, and then say I want to use cube.001. Okay, now that I've done that, you can see that instead of being linked to this mesh, it's now being linked to this one. I'm going to edit this mesh so you can see that there is 
a difference. So now I'm going to, really, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to rename it. Let's just call it weird, because it is a weird mesh. Then bring it back to cube. Now the object is the same. It's still in the same spot. It still has the same uh, physics properties attached to it. But now it looks different, because I'm saying what mesh it's going to be. Now, you can see here in our uh, OOP schematic that this data block is grayed out. What that means is that whenever there's a data block that isn't being linked to, that means as soon as you close down Blender, that data block is going to be erased. Now, you can change that. I can press this F button right here, and that will make it so that uh, this particular data block will be saved no matter what. So I'm going to click on that, and now you can see that there's a two there. What that means is that there are currently two users for this data block. One user being the object that's currently being linked to it, and the other one, which is an invisible link that basically keeps this data block from being destroyed. And you can also see it's blue in color, which means that it's going to be safe forever. <laughs> so now I'm going to go back to the cube, and now you can see that with this weird mesh being unlinked, it's not grayed out, showing that it's still going to be saved when we're done. All right, now let's do a linked duplicate. So to do that, you press Alt-D. Then I'm going to left-click to confirm. Now you can see what's happened is I've now created... Oh, there we go. <laughs> I must have canceled that somewhere so they're on the same spot. Okay, so here's our two objects. This is the original one. And you can see that both objects are being linked to the same mesh. Watch what happens when I start editing this mesh. Both objects are now being updated. This is really nice if you want to like let's say you have a parking lot full of a bunch of cars and they decide oh I don't like the way that bumper is modeled you can if all your cars are linked duplicates then you can you know fix the bumper and then have those changes being applied to all of the other cars in the scene okay one thing you'll also notice I'm gonna do just a standard duplicate the shift D and one thing you'll notice is that even though it makes a duplicate mesh, it doesn't make a duplicate material. So if I go to my material settings and then make this red, all of those are going to be red as well because they're using the same material. So I can still change the mesh. You know, that's independent, but all these meshes are currently going to the same material. So now all I have to do to change that is just go and add a new material and now you can see the link has changed and it created a new material data block. But you'll notice that when you go to change uh, materials or select a new material it's going to show you all the materials that are currently available in the project. All right, now let's go to something a little bit more <laughs> trippy. I'm going to create a new scene. So when I add a new scene, it gives me an option. It's going to say, okay, do you want to have a completely empty scene? Do you want to link the objects? Do you want to link the object data? Or do you want to do a full copy? A full copy is basically a duplicate of all the objects in there. So I'm just going to say, let's, let's just say, just link the objects. Okay. So now I have scene.01. Let's change that. Let's just call it scene2. Okay. So we have scene2. You can see that it's using the same objects that are in scene1. Now watch what happens when I take these objects and then rearrange them. Now remember how objects are simply a point in space and nothing more? When I go back to scene1, you can see those objects are now in different places. I'm going to create some new objects by doing the Alt-D. 
link duplicate just so scene one is now different from scene two. And then go back to scene one, and then you can see they're different. Okay, so objects are simply a point in space. These objects can be shared between different scenes as well. So your scenes don't have to be completely disconnected from each other, but just using you know the same meshes and the same materials. They can actually you know have objects that are in the same points in space. So which could be useful for you know <laughs> for whatever you want basically. But since an object is simply just a point in space, that information is carried from one scene to another if you set it up that way when you create a new scene. I'm just going to show you an example. If I add a new scene and let's just do a full copy, you can see now it created a whole bunch of different copies. Actually, full. It did everything. It did the objects and the materials and the meshes. So any change I make is now completely separate from the other scenes. Okay, now how is this going to be really useful in practice? Well, Primarily, you're going to be using uh, materials. You're going to want to reuse your materials a lot. And sometimes when you have a material, you're going to want to create a uh, library of materials. Like let's say you've created this really cool Chrome material and you want to reuse it. Well, you can do that pretty easily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and save this. Let's call it going to call it temp. Okay. And I pressed uh, shift space to make that full screen, by the way. <laughs> Sometimes when you go to save something, it will do it in the uh, last window you had your cursor in, which in that case right there. So I'm going to go to file and then say append. Now what this allows me to do is it allows me to add data blocks from other Blender project files into my current one. So right here I have this uh, liam.blend, which is a model that I'm currently working on. And I'm going to middle, middle, mouse click on that to open it up. And then here we have our different types of data blocks. We have our camera, image, lamp, material, mesh, object, scene, text, texture, world, all the different types of data blocks. Like let's say we have mesh. Go middle mouse click on that, and then we have cube and then cube.001. And those are basically just, uh, well, for one, they're poorly named. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be this one, cube, and that should be the face of the character I'm working on. It's not visible right now because it's not linked to anything. So I'm going to select this one. And I'm going to tell it to use cube.005. See, because we already have a cube uh, mesh named in there, so it used the same Blender convention to just you know create a duplicate, so .004, and there's our face. Now it's using the same properties as the object... So that's the reason why it's not smoothed out. The subdivision surfaces is a object property. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on, and that's what the face looks like. And you can see it's half of the face because that's how you model usually, is you model one half and then it mirrors the other. So that's one way that you can reuse information from one Blender file to another. Uh, people will often create material libraries that way. You can have a whole bunch of materials saved in a you know, Blender project file. So you can use the Blender file format to store just about anything, uh, to just keep it as in, in nice small little files. So hopefully that will get you to understand the difference between object mode and edit mode and how you can reuse files. Okay, I'm going to show you something else that's pretty neat. You can also, after I've had this one, use that same 
Liam Headmesh. Oh, it's 05. There we go. Okay. One thing you'll notice is that that little 2, it, not only does it tell us how many uh, objects are currently using that mesh, but if we click on that, what it's going to do is we'll create a single user copy. Now you can see that these two objects are, us are using that same mesh. And if I want to say, well, I want to create a single user copy of this, so if I start making changes to this, it's not going to make changes to the other. Then, like for example, if I want to make a certain character or object in a scene unique, or if I just want to try something new, I just click on that, and it's going to say, do you want to make a single user copy? Yep. Okay, there we go. Now we have our independent meshes. Okay. Sorry if this was really confusing. I have all these different cube uh, duplicates, but that's the reason why it's important to have uh, proper uh, naming conventions when you you know, start working with your files. So if you go to add a new mesh or a new object, you don't want it to be cube and then some number, which is going to be the default because, I mean, when you create an object, you can't, you can't create something out of nothing. So if I want to start modeling, I'm going to say, you know, add a new mesh and I do cube because it's, you know, there's no additional uh, prompts after that. It's not going to ask you how many sides a cube has because it's, you know, duh. <laughs> so oftentimes you're going to have a lot of objects that are going to be called cube something something. So you want to change the name of that as soon as possible. Uh, preferably as soon as you know what it is you're going to be creating. So for the object, you know, I'm going to want to, you know, name the object something. And then more importantly, I want to make the mesh be something that makes sense. So maybe two cubes or something like that. Or heck, let's just call it, you know, cup. <laughs> and then that way I can just, you know, model a cup out of it really quick. So you definitely want to make sure that you have things properly properly named as soon as possible. So that way we can start reusing it when we see, you know, cup in a list. So proper naming, reusing content from other files and then appending them into your current one, and then also managing what's going on in your scene. Now, again, this view right here, you never, ever have to use it. Just, you know, understand what's going on. You know, when you make a material, you can reuse it. If nothing is linked to it, it could go away. So if you don't want to lose something, you know, just for safety, you know, click on that. So that particular mesh, even though it's not uh, visible in your scene because it's not linked to anything, you can still get it later. And also name things properly.